I searched and searched. I'd lost my friends, and a panther dug his claws in as I fell to the mud. I laid there staring at the broken down moonshine still, wondering if this was the moment everything amounted to. To die trying to kill. To go out against everything in my being just to prove that I could do it. That I could end it. That I could protect them when there was planning involved. But I didn't. And I felt the blood trickling out my side, praying someone would find me before I died and that they would come. Right? I realized as I lay there that this is what I was willing to do to him. Leaving him to bleed out. Letting blood mix with mud. What kind of animal am I? No different to that panther. And in a sick twist of fate, my life was saved by the very one that I was trying to take. Lou found me laying in the mud of his old home, where he still brews his family's whiskey recipe, where he first brought me back when I was none the wiser as to the significant role he would have in my life. He said, I told you not to come looking, Fenna. That his life would be over soon because of his failure. But I told him that I had to. He just nodded and said, I know. As he began to clean my wound. He moved me to the Van Horn doctor's office to finish wrapping me up. And my emotions became even more conflicted than before because I knew what I had to do. Like Jack said, he was a rabid dog who will just keep trying to expand his family. To keep trying to spread the illness. That he would hurt me given the chance. But he didn't. He could have ended my life completely, left me to bleed out in the swamp, tear the hand that bears his mark from its limb, and abandon me to. But he didn't. Instead, he scooped me up and treated my wounds. And family is never a problem rang in my head, and I needed to know if he would rather be dead. If he wanted to be free from the thing that torments him then my conscience would be clear for taking his life because he would be free from the people who fear and despise what they don't know, what they don't accept to be true. And he'd be free from the voices that surround his head and feed him lies. But he didn't want to. So... I went to plan B. Figure out what death would be honorable in his eyes, or at least have him make peace. And then I could confront the God himself. He didn't want to do it, to face it, so I knew I had to force him. And I did what he did, what I learned from him. We would talk to this god one way or another. So with my gun drawn on him, he called for Rex, and off we went to the cave near Butch's Creek, where he began my journey in this chaos and where I would end it. He was scared to enter, scared of the shadows surrounding it. But once we got to the fire, He sat and watched. How do you talk to him? Do we need the Ica? I stated. But Lou can hear him all the time. Only when he wants to be heard, but he doesn't need any sort of medicine for it. So now I had to figure out, how do I entice this god to show himself without taking the Ica? 
Because I would do it sober mind and I would take him down and remember it. I screamed at him, invited him in, threatened Lou's head again, but nothing. Lou said he hears him loudest when he hasn't drunk his whiskey. He heard him loudest in Sissica, sober. So I sat my ass down beside him and we waited for his sobriety. And still, he never came. Instead, Lou began to feel peace, relaxed, and silence. It broke my soul even more, knowing he was now at some semblance of peace, and though I feel responsible and almost happy for it, that joy faded as fast as it came when I remembered I would be responsible for taking it away. I wanted to shoot him right then and there, to let him die with no voices screaming at him, to let peace live on forever. But that wouldn't save his soul. No, someone had to take his place and save him. To become the holder of the book, the one who he is. The one who knows the truth. Lou began to speak of a different ritual. The one that only a chosen few could do. It would end his life, he stated. Gruesomely. Painfully. And though I didn't take the echo, I began to hear again. This is it. A voice whispering in my ear that I had not heard in months. He didn't want to put that burden on me. He didn't want me to carry the weight of this pact. He didn't want me to do it. He wanted to leave the cave before anything worse could grab him, before the shadows started coming back. Got into a cabin where we changed clothes. I wore red, knowing what I was about to do would ruin them. And he wore a farmer's outfit. And I had him direct me to the spot where it all started for him. I promised I'd help him find somebody to do it. But I already knew that only I could do it. I'd take care of him just as I would any of my siblings. He and I both survived things that were meant to kill us. And then it takes someone else in our stead. So one of us has to go. We're being watched over by something that either wants to pit us against each other or bring us together as one family. Luke could have ended me multiple times back at the swamp in the cave the cabin but he always chose family now I was choosing both sides as I was about to commit immeasurable pain to him the only way out is through he began whispering in my ear as he handed me the book only those who have heard him can read it, he told me. I flipped it open and felt a sense of understanding of what he needed me to do. And Lou placed a knife before me, the same one that was used to dig into my own hand. the book and we proceeded I cut into his back first I wanted to throw up everything in my being was screaming for me to stop except the one voice in the back of my mind that kept telling me the only way out is through 
to finish it. Then I could come face to face with this God and end it for good. I finished carving the symbols that appear in the book into his back. Blood was staining my hands and arms as it soaked into my sleeves. Still, he remained still on his knees before his great-grandmother's grave. The one who started it all. I continued to carve into his body. His arms. His legs. It needed to cover him. He felt the sting. He was in pain. I knew he was. And if I could stop it, I would. But it had to be done. It ended with a symbol dug into his chest, the marking we bear on our hands now tearing the skin all over him. Blood. So much blood, and I didn't even realize my face was covered in it. It was everywhere by the time I finished. I don't want you here when he comes to get me, Lou said. I didn't want to be there either when he did. I was not strong enough to come face to face with him yet. I kissed Lou on the forehead. A sign of admiration passed down from my poppy's family. <laughs> you never say goodbye to a friend or a family forever without a kiss to send them off with. It was strange to say goodbye to someone who was still breathing. But I guess I'm used to saying goodbye to family these days. A book in hand. I ran to Rex, leaving Lou to the fate of the gods I wanted to destroy. But now, I am its catalyst. Your machine. I did. 